Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be painting a Sherman Tesla tank from start to finish. But first of all I want to say a huge thank you to my sponsors Goblin Gaming who sent me out the Sherman. Please check the description box down below, you'll find a direct link to their web store and this link greatly helps my YouTube channel so please use the link in the description box below. Okay guys, I had an absolute blast painting up this Sherman using authentic World War II colours. I ordered some AK Interactive paints and they're absolutely brilliant for painting uh, up the Sherman using olive drab colours. I hope you uh, enjoy this video guys, uh, it's going to be a long one as always and don't worry if you paint sci-fi uh, games workshop miniatures, this colour scheme is absolutely perfect for Imperial Guard or Astra Militarium as they're known now. And you could also paint it up for Space Marines. Uh, I think the Raptor chapter would look absolutely awesome in this colour scheme. But anyway, uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard guys. And for all those people that have been watching my tutorials over the years, you know what comes next. Go grab yourselves a nice hot drink, or maybe a nice ice cold beer, and we'll get started. The first thing I do is prime the tank using Alclad 2's white primer. Now I've not filmed this as it's quite boring priming a miniature, but the most important thing you need to know is that the Alclad primer is lacquer based and is really harmful if inhaled. So please make sure you're well ventilated, wearing a respirator and you should have no problems with the primer. Here you can see I've purchased some AK Interactive uh, paints. It's in an olive drab set, which is absolutely fantastic to do everything we need to do to the Sherman that we're going to be painting today. The colors range from shadow all the way up to highlights. And then we have two other separate colors, one for the rubber wheels and one for the tracks. Here I'm using olive drab shadow to actually do a pre-shade on the tank. I also want to apologise for all the snoring you're going to hear in the background. <laughs> That's my pug chacks. Here you can see I'm going round all the details adding shadows. I'm working at about 25 psi which is actually a little too high for these paints. These paints are really thin and go down nicely and you might see the odd splash mark where I'm painting at too high a psi. I only realised halfway through and I was wondering why the paint was actually um, coming out so quick. If you're new to airbrushing guys, pre-shading is a great uh, technique to actually start to get used to your airbrush as you're forced to try and use the airbrush and control it as best you can. But this is where it becomes awesome. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes in the pre-shading stage guys because you can cover up as little or as much as it, uh, you want with the base colour. So you'll notice that I'm um, going really loosely around the, the details guys because I know it's not going to matter if I make any mistakes as I can cover them up with a base colour. I'm using two different airbrushes in this tutorial guys. I'm using my Awata Eclipse CS airbrush for most of the base work and I switched over for fine detail work to my Air Cobra from Ammo of MIG which was sent to me recently and it's a fantastic airbrush. While you're watching me pre-shade the tank, I'm just gonna uh, mention how much fun I had working on the Conflict 47 miniatures from Warlord Games. Uh, the starter box is absolutely fantastic and it comes with the Sherman Tesla uh, cannon variant tank and also a Walker uh, 20 troops and 5 heavy. 
uh, infantry I'll probably do another tutorial maybe on the walker or the heavy infantry and uh, I have to thank James from Goblin Gaming who uh, came up with the idea of uh, starting on Conflict 47 and uh, I really really like the uh, concept of Conflict 47 but if you want to find out any more information go over to Goblin Gaming and you can see all the different starter sets uh, I really love the British ones as well <laughs> Sorry guys, he's snoring, he's completely out of control. <laughs> the pre-shading has really started to build up now guys and it's nearly finished and I think it's probably taken about 10 minutes to pre-shade the whole tank which is really really fast. I also want to mention guys that the AK Interactive paints are airbrush ready and they go straight in the airbrush cup and spray absolutely beautifully. Um, this is the first time I've actually used AK Interactive paints and I really like them so I highly recommend their uh, paints. Uh, I've used MIG before um, but I actually think I slightly prefer the AK Interactive paints. Um, that's their acrylic paints. Uh, as regards to enamels, uh, I like them equally just as much. Now we're going to lay down the olive drab base onto the tank. And what you'll see me doing is avoiding the areas that I've already pre-shade. And I'm just blending in the base colour around it. So I'm trying to leave some of the uh, shading behind which will uh, leave a really nice effect. Early on in the video I said that it doesn't matter if you're a little bit messy in the pre-shade stage. The reason for this is that we can easily cover it up. As you can see uh, now, I'm leaving faint shadowing be behind and going over it with a base colour but anywhere that I think that the shadow was too strong or too stark, I'm just going uh, over that area a little bit more aggressively with the base colour. And as you can see guys, just with the base colour and the pre-shading, the tank is already starting to look pretty cool already. I'd love uh, you guys to head on over to my Facebook page when you get the chance. I update really regularly on Facebook and I also answer pretty much every question that gets thrown at me. Uh, so if you've got any queries about miniatures that I paint or any questions about airbrushing or brush painting techniques uh, or if you just want to say hi, uh, head on over to my Facebook page guys. Uh, the link's in the description box below. And uh, like I say, I'd like to uh, see you over there on my Facebook page. We're about nine minutes into the video now, guys. And you'll probably have noticed that I'm doing a lot of talking in this video. Way more than I normally do. I'm trying something different. Uh, so uh, let me know if you prefer... Uh, less talk in the videos or me waffling on a little bit in the <laughs> in between and uh, Yeah, so uh, let me know in the comments field down below Here you can see I'm working on the track section and I'm just focusing on the main assemblies of the wheels and leaving the shading behind in all the extreme recesses underneath uh, the wheels there I want to take this opportunity guys to say a huge thank you to all my patreon supporters it means a great deal to me and it enables me to buy more miniatures for reviews it enabled me to buy the camera that I'm actually doing this tutorial on to be quite honest guys so if you want to support me on patreon whether it's a dollar or more everything uh, and anything I should say 
that you're able to uh, support me on is absolutely appreciated uh, so again i'll put a link in the description box below to my patreon guys and uh, i really do appreciate all the support so if you are on patreon at the moment guys know that i really appreciate it i don't know whether i picked the right uh video to do a lot of talking on guys uh considering all the snoring in the background i really hope it doesn't put you off too much <laughs> I really love the look of this Tesla Canon. Looks absolutely fantastic. Um, the cool thing with this kit is as well, I didn't build up the second turret, but you have a normal turret in the kit. So you can actually use it in games of bolt action as a normal uh, World War II Sherman, or obviously you can use it as a Tesla variant. Okay guys, now I'm going to be using Olive Drab Light Base and I'm going to start highlighting. So I'm going to be avoiding all of the shadows and I'll be hitting uh, the center areas of panels. Uh, here you can see that I'm hitting the outer uh, ring of the turret. And some of those plates on the front of the hull. And don't worry too much if it seems that the uh, highlights too bright at first what you'll find is as it actually starts to dry uh, it becomes darker so as it's wet on the tank it'll look a lot brighter than it actually is so don't be too alarmed I said earlier on in the video how impressed I am with the AK interactive paints but this set is absolutely fantastic it's made the job of uh, adding shadows and highlights, well, super easy because they're all labeled for you. So I literally could build up all the sh shading and the highlights uh, from start to finish uh, by the label of the bottle, which is fantastic really, guys. So uh, if you do uh, want to paint up your own Sherman tanks, highly recommend this paint set. It's getting really close to Christmas now guys and uh, I know uh, I've been getting more airbrush related questions than normal on my Facebook page uh, as the build up to Christmas comes and a lot of people are going to uh, be getting new airbrushes and compressors for Christmas. Uh, are you getting a new airbrush or compressor for uh, Christmas? Let me know in the comments field down below and uh, I know uh, one great guy that I speak to on Facebook uh, a, a lot is uh, getting a, a nice airbrush set uh, with some uh, new Vallejo Mecha colour paints. He's got the whole range and uh, he can't wait to uh, get started on those. So exciting times, guys! Exciting times. You might not be able to tell uh, because you can only see the front of the airbrush, but this is the new Air Cobra airbrush by Ammo. Uh, by MIG and uh, I really really like it guys um, it's got a really tall trigger which I didn't think I'd uh, like using at first but um, I actually really like the, the feel of the trigger mechanism especially the fact that it's got uh, a really nice uh, engraved uh, detail that uh, enables you to uh, get a nice grip on the trigger I'm filming this guys uh, about 8 o'clock on the evening and the children have just been put to bed so I've just opened up a nice can of Tisky Polish beer highly recommended guys uh, so uh, cheers if you did grab yourself a nice ice cold beer at the start of the video Again guys, uh, just working on all the details on the tank, uh, just working on the uh, cupulos or cabulos, I can't even pronounce uh, how they're called guys, so I'm just going to say hatches.
So if you haven't already uh, guessed guys by my accent, but you've probably guessed that I'm from uh, the Midlands. Uh, so I'm from Birmingham in the UK. And uh, I've got a great bunch of friends that I play Malifaux with and sometimes 40k. Uh, but I'm trying to get them into new gaming systems like Conflict 47. Uh, but if I don't manage to get them into it, guys, can anyone recommend a really great uh, gaming club that I could join in Birmingham? I really uh, want to try and start playing new gaming systems, uh, one of those being Conflict 47, but there's so many great games out there that I just want to uh, try out uh, this, uh, or I should say next year. Um, so yeah, hit me up uh, with um, information regarding clubs in Birmingham. Hopefully you'll notice I'm being more careful now where I lay down the paint. I'm making sure that I hit, just for example, the very front surface of those uh, wheel assemblies um, on the tracks. Hopefully you can see that the paint's drying really quick and uh, what I mentioned a moment ago that as it dries uh, it becomes darker. Sorry if my uh, big fat hands are blocking uh, what I'm actually trying to show you guys sometimes. My camera work's not the best. I'm hoping to improve uh, <laughs> my camera work over the coming months. Uh, let me know as well guys in the comments field down below what would you like to see a tutorial on next? Uh, a walker, uh, which will be again in olive drab colours, but maybe I'll do some chipping and that sort of thing on it and uh, or some infantry uh, some heavy armored infantry which look a little bit like a cross between world war ii vets and space marines which is like a really cool uh, mashup i'm just flicking through the uh, conflict 47 rule book uh, the other day and uh, it looks so much fun. I mean, I don't know much of the rules, and I do need to watch some battle reports uh, just to get the uh, lowdown on how it plays. Uh, but it does look great fun. And if I'm correct, again, I could be wrong here, guys, uh, because I'm not too sure. But I believe it's like a sort of a hybrid of uh, bolt action, and the rules are a little bit similar, if I'm correct. Things are going to get a hell of a lot noisier, guys, as Nala and my other perg has just come to join me in the living room. No, nope, she's just wandered off. I thought we'd have two snoring dogs in the background of the video for a minute then. Here I'm using satin varnish. Now you could use gloss varnish for the technique that I'm going to be doing in a moment called pin washing. Uh, but the reason I use satin varnish is it looks a lot more natural than the gloss varnish. And it also is going to leave subtle staining behind as well. And the staining is what I think makes things look a little bit more authentic and realistic. So um, I tend to use satin varnish as opposed to gloss varnish. I'm laying down the satin varnish pretty uh, thinly and I'm being really careful not to make this pull as it will leave a really bad effect behind. You'll get like, a, um, like a, an orange peel effect with this varnish if you put, place it down too thickly. So um, really thin light coats and you'll get a really nice end result. I oversprayed the bottom of the tank on purpose to show you the effect. Um, hopefully I've remembered to include this, but you can see that I'm placing it down too thickly on the bottom uh, of the tank there, and uh, it leaves a really nasty effect. 
Now I'm going to use the rubber tires paint from the uh, War Game paint set and uh, this is just a part place around the uh, rubber wheels like so. Two coats are needed as the paint's really thin as it's airbrush ready. Uh, another thing to know guys is I'm using a really large brush here. This is a, a Windsor and Newton Series 7 size 3 and I'm being pretty messy painting the rubber on the wheels and the reason for this is I'm going to be using uh, pigments and mud uh, later on in the video so a lot of the uh, painting of the uh, rubber wheel is going to be covered up anyway it's just uh, painted as a precaution just in case there's an area that's missed with the mud later on uh, here I'm painting the tracks up using uh, the track uh, colour and it's really nice uh, dark brown and uh, I really like this and I'll be using this on my tracks in future same thing as the rubber tyres I'm using the size 3 brush and just being very loose with the brush there painting the tracks Okay, now comes a really fun part and we're going to use some dark streaking grime to actually start making some of the panels pop uh, these uh, shot glasses can be got from like pound uh, uh, land type stores in the UK but I'm sure you've got the equivalent uh, in other countries guys um, so uh, really recommend picking these up for when you want to use your washes and pigments and that sort of thing uh, I was given a, a, a big bunch of them by a, a good mate of mine from uh, Warp Art Studios uh, so thanks for the uh, little shop glasses mate now here what's happening guys is the capillary action of the brush is pulling the um, wash into all the nooks and crannies and the crevices and it's really helping to make all the details pop out now this is an enamel based product guys and it works harmoniously with the acrylic paste, uh, paints that I've laid down earlier so don't worry as long as you've left them to thoroughly dry and cure and I've also used varnish as well guys uh, you won't damage the paintwork using these enamels but they work a hell of a lot better than acrylic washes as you're able to manipulate them uh, with white spirit or an equivalent of white spirit which I use uh, I believe MIG Ammo's odorless thinner and um, you're able to get rid of stains and marks and just blend the uh, wash which you're really unable to do with acrylic washes so if you've not used enamels before guys I highly recommend picking up some of AK Interactive or MIG uh, uh, ammo's enamel washes and here you'll see that I'm just literally touching the panel and you'll see the wash is doing all the work for me I uh, really love a good old uh, pin wash guys it's uh, so much fun to do Uh, here you'll see that I've added too much wash to uh, a section of the tank and um, because it's enamel I'm able to just literally uh, go to another area of the tank and then just uh, use the bristles of the brush to uh, mop up the excess wash. It's also important to note guys that you can't thin down enamel paints with water um, you'll just see the water just separate into the oil it'll be a bit like adding water to cooking oil and you, you see that um, weird swirling effect of the two different uh, liquids that just don't work together uh, you need to use either um, a white spirit or a, a white spirit equivalent I'm using uh, ammo uh, by MIGS 
um, odorless thinner, which is much nicer than white spirits, as white spirits can be quite pungy, guys. Here you can see that uh, it's really that extra armor on the side of the tank is really uh, popping out from the tank now that I've uh, used the uh, oil, sorry, the enamel wash. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, prop up the tank here, guys, and absolutely epically failing because uh, I wanted to show you uh, me pin washing the uh, uh, track assembly. Here we go, uh, use a little uh, paint and uh, we have some success. But here you can see that I'm just washing over the whole area with the uh, uh, enamel wash. And uh, again, it just wants to uh, go into all the recesses. It uh, really great these enamel washes, guys. I uh, didn't show you uh, me putting the decals on the tanks. I've done many decal tutorials over the years, um, but I basically placed them down over the satin varnish and used some microset to help um, them set to the surface and flatten down a little more and just whipped off with a cotton bud. And then I went back over the decals with some more satin varnish to seal them in. Now we're going to add some streaking rust effects to the tank. This is going to do two things. One, it's going to make the tank look a little rusty, but it's also going to break up all of that olive drab colour and going to leave a really nice, subtle uh, second colour behind on the tank. The decals that came with the start collecting set are really cool and they actually had uh, tank names. Uh, for decals and if you're uh, eagle-eyed you might have spotted that this tank's called Sabin Sally you guys don't know how long I've been waiting to paint this tank for uh, it seems like a year but it's only been about a week but uh, we've been hit by some pretty bad snow in the UK and I say bad snow uh, for the UK but it's you know uh, maybe a foot deep maybe not even that but for the UK everything grinds to a halt and I received no post and I've been desperately waiting for these paints to do this tutorial um, but uh, the snow seems to be uh, melting away now and things are uh, slowly getting back to normal in the UK um, but uh, a buddy of mine showed me some of his friends in Sweden <laughs> and that's what you call snow and I bet their postmen still turn up to the doors <laughs> you'll notice that I'm just dotting uh, around the tank in certain areas where I want to add interest here uh, uh, I'm going to be using uh, ammo by Migs odorless thinner sorry the label had worn off but it's odorless thinner and as you can see that I've just moistened the bristles it's not actually wet so I wicked off some of the odorless thinner on some paper towel uh, and then I'm just drawing out those uh, little areas of colour in streaks and just pulling downwards and that's giving me those rust streaks and like I said a moment ago the actual addition of another colour onto the tank uh, apart from the olive drab is a real welcome change there's no real um, wrong or right here guys but the rule of thumb is if you see um, an area of interest start picking it out with some of the rust color and actually tell your own story of where the rust uh, would uh, start to form on an area for example, what I've done on this tank is I've left those extra armor panels uh, from rust streaks so they'll pop out even more from the tank when I start pulling the streaks down.
The cool thing about this technique, guys, is you can push and pull the paint using the odorless thinner uh, any which way, so you can add more or you can take more away. But here you'll see those dots uh, will start to uh, pull some streaks from them, and you'll start to see the cool effect build up. You'll notice that I never added any rust to the uh, track assemblies. The reason for this, guys, is not that I don't think there'd be any rust in those areas. I just felt that once I had the mud, uh, any rust uh, that I would add would get covered anyway. 30 minutes into the video, guys, and on can number two already. <laughs> As you can see guys, uh, pulling those uh, and stumping out those dots of rust, it's real simple to do guys. Anyone can use and uh, replicate this technique. Um, best to use a small brush when, when doing this, especially on this scale of tank, as you're able to make more streak lines and it'll look more in scale and authentic that way. I don't know whether my uh, <laughs> microphone's picking this up, but my next door neighbour's blasting out last Christmas. <laughs> oh, I hope it's not being picked up by the uh, camera guys, but uh, it's, uh, yeah. Well, I suppose it's good that they're in the festive mood, I, su I suppose. Going to what I was saying a few minutes ago and how good these enamel washes are, as you can see, I'm pulling down uh, from top to bottom with the streaks to make them look as authentic as I possibly can. But if I was to do this with uh, an acrylic wash, it'd be impossible to then manipulate those little dots of rust that I added. Uh, so again, guys, try new products. Uh, you'll be surprised that how uh, many different products are that there are on the market that help us in this hobby. Now I'm going to make a mud mix with uh, the matte varnish that I'm going to add to the pigments and the uh, Dark Earth Pigment, I should say, by uh, Ammo by Mig. And I'm going to use some of the uh, track wash. I add some pigment into the track wash, which is gonna um, thicken up the wash a little I add a bit of matte varnish which generally doesn't work too well with the enamel uh, because it's uh, acrylic based so it's water based uh, but it's just as a binder here you can see that I'm using a really old splayed brush it's important that you don't use the good brush for this guys because it's really messy and it will ruin your brushes especially using clumps of pigment and wash and dabbing it in you'll notice that I've got two separate shot glasses the one's got the pigment and wash mix and the other shot glass has just got pigment in on its own so what I do is I wet the surface of the uh, track assembly with the uh, mud wash uh, mix and then I'm dabbing in some uh, dry pigments on top of that which is going to leave some texture behind I'm not too worried that uh, the pigments uh, are not sealed in at the moment because I'll be varnishing the tank when I finish Near the start of the video I mentioned how loosely I was painting the rubber wheels and the tracks and this is why most of 
the work that was done on the tracks and the rubber wheels is being covered up with this uh, pigment mix here I'm adding the mud wash to the bottom of the tank and I'm adding a little bit of odorless thinner to the mix just to um, give it a grubby muddy uh, surface so to reiterate guys please use an old rubbish cheap uh, brush if I get any comments below saying I've ruined their Windsor and Newton brush using pigments and washes <laughs> I have warned you <laughs> Now I'm going to start using MIG uh, Ammo's oil brushes. These are absolutely fantastic. And as you can see, I've already added uh, some of the oil brusher here, which is a buff color, to the uh, side of the hull of the tank. And I'm just using some odorless thinner to blend in the buff color with the tank and what I'm trying to do here is create different volumes of uh, colour uh, using the buff. So yeah, the colour variation that it's going to be added uh, using the buff colour is just another layer of uh, colour that breaks up the look. Here you'll see that I'm adding the buff colour just to the top of that extra armour plating and the top of the hull there. And I'll just be streaking that down. I try not to add too much of the buff colour because it is quite light and it can start to uh, lead to a winter weathered uh, sort of look and that's not what I'm going for. I'm just adding it to create volumes. If you were trying to do this effect with acrylic, again, I'm not bashing acrylics. Acrylic paints were uh, what I used to airbrush the tank, and acrylic paints are fantastic. But uh, enamels are fantastic also, and they both have a place. Uh, so um, if you was using acrylic paints, for example, to try and create this effect, it would take you a very, very long time indeed to create that really nice blended effect. And as you can see now, that uh, top armor panel is really starting to pop out from the tank and uh, by adding that buff color, which starts to make the tank look heavier and more realistic. You can actually add more colors to the armor of the tank you could add blue yellow in very very small doses just again to break up the olive drab color and add different volumes and lights I stick to just buff and I believe a green color uh, on this tank but you could actually play around with it for hours and on uh, hours on end now I'm going to dry brush Vallejo Game Air Chainmail Silver onto all of the track assemblies. This is going to make the tracks pop and also add another layer of realism. If you look at the underside of the tank, you could actually make the whole tank look that dirty and grubby if you wanted to. Um, but I just wanted to leave the tank fairly clean in its uh, look a lot of pro modelers might uh, turn their nose up at dry brushing guys but don't be put off yes it's an old technique uh, <laughs> one of the oldest tricks in the book but 
it still has its place and it still can help us modelers out and get uh, some really nice simple effects. And now we're going to use some weird colours on a World War II authentic looking tank. We're actually going to be using blues. Uh, that's because we doing the Tesla Canon coils and we're going to uh, be using the airbrush to get some OSL uh, which stands for object source lighting uh, down to give like a glowing effect on those coils. I thinned down the Colored or Sky Color uh, by Games Workshop uh, with just some regular water and uh, as you can see it's going to take two coats to get a, a nice even coverage. Here I'm using Bar Rath Blue um, which is uh, an edge color by Games Workshop and I've just thinned it down uh, with some water in the airbrush cup and I'm just being as careful as I possibly can to just catch the top surface of each coil with the bar off blue. I dropped down the PSI of my airbrush for this particular job because you can see I'm working very closely. Um, I'm working at about 15 PSI. If I was working at a really high PSI, the paint would just be splashing everywhere. So uh, lower your PSI for really fine detail work, guys. Don't forget to let me know in the comments field down below, guys, what you'd like to see me do a tutorial on next. Troops or uh, a walker, which looks a little bit like a cross between a killer can and uh, a World War 2 well not World War 2 because there was no war <laughs> walkers that I'm aware of in World War 2 but yeah a bit like a killer can from uh, Games Workshop's Orcs Now I've added some Vallejo Game Air White to the airbrush cup and again I'm being super careful to make sure that I'm hitting just the very very center of each coil with the white and this is what's giving us our OSL um, effect or object source lighted effect. this is an old wash azimuth blue and I think the equivalent of this is glum and blue now and um, I just washed the Tesla Canon with the azimuth blue uh, just in the recesses here I'm using some AK interactive ultra matte varnish now when it says ultra matte this really is ultra matte so I place it down super thin in a thin layer over the um, uh, satin varnish that I had in earlier. The reason I went with ultra matte varnish is it uh, looks better under my camera light uh, than um, a matte varnish or satin varnish would because it reflects off my lamps and I wouldn't be able to show the finished result quite well. So that's why I went for ultra matte. But you can choose a finish of your preference. You could go with satin varnish 
or you could go with matte or if you like the look of ultra matte varnish you could go with that as well so the finish of the tank is entirely up to you guys We're coming up to the end of the video guys. Uh, I think we're over 40 minutes into this video and I can't believe I've rambled for that long. I'm glad I've been drinking uh, a few cans of uh, Tisky uh, <laughs> beer whilst um, doing this video because I would have a very dry mouth indeed. Um, but yeah, uh, just finishing up the tank here guys and adding in the very uh, last touch which is the matte varnish and we're pretty much finished painting the Tesla Sherman tank. And here we have our finished Sherman Tesla variant tank. And I know I mentioned it at the start of the video, guys, but I'll say it again, this tank was so much fun to paint. Warlord Games done a fantastic job on uh, this Sherman. And uh, as little as my World War II knowledge goes, guys, this is a very, very authentic looking tank. Uh, I also want to again say a huge thank you uh, to my uh, sponsors Goblin Gaming. Please check the description box below for their web store link and please use that link if you're going to purchase anything from them as this greatly helps my YouTube channel which I really appreciate. Uh, don't forget to head on over to my Facebook page, uh, check out my content, leave me a comment or at ask a question I'll be uh, really uh, glad to reply to each and every one of your uh, questions that you've got for me uh, don't forget to leave a comment uh, down below uh, what would you like to see me paint next uh, what did you think of this tutorial or what did you think of my rambling in this video <laughs> let me know in the comments field down below and uh, lastly guys uh, thank you very much for watching this video I do appreciate all my uh, support so thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.